Welcome to Football Today, Team Profiles and Projections. And today we look at number six in our power rankings coming off of an 11-6 and six season, the Philadelphia Eagles. Just in last year, they were 7th in scoring on offense, 30th in scoring on defense. And I'm excited to talk about this. You know, like this, right, let me get through some stuff first. Yeah, get through some stuff. This is Nick Sirianni's fourth year. New co- brand new coordinators. Kellen Moore, his first season, he was the Chargers OC. Obviously, was fired um, in the Brandon Staley firing after being fired by the Cowboys the year before. You know who you know joined there with Jason Garrett back in the day, and then Vic Fangio. Vic Fangio, do you know him? Well, he's a pretty damn good defensive coordinator. It's his first season after being the Miami Dolphins defensive coordinator last year, leaving with a little bit of bad blood. He consulted with the Eagles in 2022 after being the Broncos head coach. Justin, they started the season 10-1, and one, and they finished at 1-6. and six. I have been back on the Eagles this offseason, and I've been the bounce back. Now, some people we've talked to are like, eh, maybe, maybe don't, right? And then we saw one joint training camp practice of them, and you know the issues of picking the blitz were there. Where are you with the Eagles? Are you, are you back on, or are you worried about this team collapsing again? I mean, both. I want to be back on so bad. And Bobby, it was the same reason why when they were 10-1 and one last year, and people were talking about, oh well, this isn't a good football team. My my mind was like, I, I my mind was about to be torn torn to pieces, blown to pieces, because I'm like, number one, how can you say that a ten and one football team is not very good? Which I guess those people were right. And then number two, it's like I I thought that the Eagles roster was too talented to fail, but what I didn't necessarily perceive coming is that I think the Eagles looked at what they did. To get to ten and one, and it's certainly the road to them being ten and one in two thousand twenty three was not the same road to success that they had in two thousand twenty two. We're going to talk about exactly why getting off the fast starts, their explosive offense. There were no answers for Jalen Hurts last year, but Bobby, I, I am afraid of this football team. Like even though the talent is there, you can argue in some areas it got better, and in some areas it has gotten a, a little bit worse. I don't even think it's gotten a lot worse. It's gotten a little bit worse. But I am worried about this team just having issues, whether that be with coaching staff, they're the head coach, whether that be in the locker room, whether it's feeling fan pressure, the big, big dom, whatever the case may be. I'm worried that this team just has deeply rooted issues. So I'll give you my reasons for optimism and my reasons for worry about them on both sides of the ball. Offensively, they are so talented, right? And even even through all their struggles, it was much more of a defensive issue than an offensive issue, right? They put up points in some of those games. Um, Now, there were some games they didn't, like San Fran and Dallas. Uh, But they have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. That's maybe the best wide receiver duo in the NFL, right? Uh, and then you add Jahan Dawson to it. You have Dallas Goddard, who's a really good tight end. You add Saquon Barkley. And I, I you know, you have a good offensive line, even though they lost Jason Kelsey. And Jalen Hurts, who, no matter what your thoughts are on, is plenty of capable of producing. Right? So that's my reason for like optimism on this offense. The reason for pessimism is I don't love Kellen Moore as an offensive coordinator, never have. And it may not be even but I still think he's like a He's your like C your B C plus B minus coordinator where he he will coach to the talent that he has. You know, he's not going to hold your talent back necessarily, but he's not going to push him forward with new ways. That is not a good fit with Jalen Hurts with the whole, you know, picking up the blitz and setting protections at the line of scrimmage. And you've lost Jason Kelsey on that. That they are a team that just I have never seen a team just have zero answers for the blitz. Zero. Right? Against yeah. teams that blitz nonstop. Just no a- let alone set it, picking it up correctly, having the outlets for it, they had nothing for it, and I don't think Kellen Moore is the great uh, a great fit for that. And you lose Jason Kelsey, you know, a, a Hall of Fame center on defense. Um, my reasons for pessimism is that the talent isn't that great. It's good, but it's not great. Right. Um, you know, it's not the same talent that it was for the Super Bowl year. The reason for optimism is that it is good, and they have a great defensive coordinator in Vic Fangio. Right, right. So I think this is, I think this team's going to be top ten in offense and top ten in defense. Even if we're talking about them as maybe like, nah, I don't really think they're a Super Bowl contender, you know, type of thing. I think because of the talent and the coaching, 
they will be top 10. They will just finish in top 10 offensive scoring and top 10 defensive scoring. Even if they're like 15th or 16th in defensive yards, they'll end up top 10 in scoring because of who Vic Fangio is. Yeah, they were really bad on third downs, and they were really – defensively, they were really bad on third downs, and they were really bad in the red zone last year, partially because that secondary was just so bad. Um, James Bradbury was not the same. The safeties were – One of the worst huge, coaching jobs I've ever seen, too. Yeah, and then also they were really bad in the red zone, too. And those two areas, third down and in the red zone, that's exactly where I think Vic Vangio is going to thrive the most. Um, and they also made some – key additions, especially in the secondary, that will hopefully help go a long way on third downs and in the secondary as well. But Bobby, I, I want to start on the offensive side of the ball like we normally do on these on these TPPs. Uh, do you do you want to start or do you want me to start on kind of like what, what went wrong for the Eagles offensively and what was different from 2022 to 2023? Yeah, I guess you could talk about what went wrong because most of my notes are just about how fucking loaded they are. They are loaded. They are loaded. But I really wanted to break down, well, if they're seventh in, in points per drive, and if they're seventh in offensive EPA, ninth in EPA per drop back, and fourth in EPA per rush, well, some numbers had to be bad, right? There has to be an area where they're bad because they were a relatively not a good offensive team, especially from like week 10 on in the second half of the season. So here's the main thing where. The Eagles, in 2022, what they were very, very good at is they got leads early and they held on to them. And there were even games in 2022 where we're taking out starters and we're we're laughing and we're vibing and we're just kicking the shit out of teams. That was not the case in 2023. They did not have the same. I think they were actually in the in plus. They were in the minus of plus minus of a, a first half point differential. They were 17th in EPA per play on early downs, so even forget first half for a second. Let's talk, let's talk about early downs and late downs. 17th in EPA per play on early downs. They were second in EPA per play on third and fourth down. I think a lot of it has to do with that. Hey, the, the tush push, and then also when you give Jalen Hurts no other choice, but we have to throw the ball down the field, then let's throw the ball down the field. Hurts was a 15th out of 23 quarterbacks in EPA CPOE composite on early downs last year. Um, they were 11th in EPA per play in the first half and 4th in EPA per play in the second half. So clearly, the second of everything. Later downs, 3rd and 4th down, they were better. And in the second half of games, they were better than the, than where they were in the first half. But even let's break it down from this. From week 10 on, this is after their 10 and 11 run. From week 10 on, they were 21st in EPA per play in the first half. And they were 11th in the second half. And Bobby... When you look at Jalen Hurts' first down passes in the first half of games, in 2022, 9.5 air yards per attempt, 2.67 sec seconds time to throw. So the ball came out quick. He was decisive. There were answers for Jalen Hurts, and they were really able to stretch the field. In 2023, it went down to 7.5 air yards per attempt and 3.04 seconds time to to throw and also with that rate you saw uh eight it was an eight percent increase of, of throws at or behind the line of scrimmage as well while the time to throw increased that's the crazy part is that everything with the eagles offense was backwards is that you had the air yards decrease but the time to throw increased that it makes no sense there was no semblance of quick game and even though the air yards decreased you would think okay but there was a quick game no there wasn't actually a quick game because they had no answers to the blitz, and Jalen Hurts would hold on to the ball for longer. Usually when you hold on to the ball for longer, you're airing it down the field more. That was not the case with that offense last year. It was ass backwards. It made no sense. There was no answers for Jalen Hurts, and they did not get off to those fast starts that they did in 2022. Well, in, in 2022, man, they just had answers for everything. Yes. Right? They were, It was defense. Like the, really the only game plan that you could throw out there that would work it's just like, hey, throw a bunch of different stuff, right? Just mix up your coverages like crazy. You know, don't show when you're blitzing. Just try and disguise everything. And even then, that didn't work because that offense was a juggernaut, right? Even in the game they lost in the Super Bowl, they dominated. They they had a great game. They had just had they had answers for every single thing that you did. And last year, like you said, was the exact opposite, where it was just when you're playing Wink Martindale and Todd Bowles. And you're just not, you just don't have outlets for the blitz. Like, I just, I don't understand how that works. Like, I don't, I don't understand, who, like, who, 
who was in charge of that offense to let that happen? You know, and, and obviously Brian Johnson has been fired and they bring in Kellen Moore. So that's the thing is they got to have the outlets. Uh, I think the run game will be a little more successful with Saquon Barkley this year. Uh, but what we've seen, because we got this, we got to see a little peek of them in camp. Well, one thing we're going to see is we're going to see A.J. Brown a lot more involved in the quick game. Right. You know, he had 106 catches last year, 1,500 yards, seven touchdowns. He was at, at one point was on a rate to break the wide receiver record as well. But Tyreek yeah. was just doing that much better that it didn't really get that much attention. But let me ask you this. Do you think the force feeding of A.J. Brown is similar to the force feeding of the Bills with Stefan Diggs? Where Stefan Diggs, his target rate was really cut down after Joe Brady came in with the Bills. We just did their TPP the other day. And we saw how that increased overall offensive efficiency when more people are involved and you're running the ball more. Like, Devontae Smith, in my opinion, Devontae Smith should be the guy that is working in the quick game. Your your slot receiver, your tight end, should be the person that's involved in the quick game. And A.J. Brown should be involved in everything. But A.J. Brown should be your intermediate and deep guy, not the guy that you're constantly spamming, spamming, spamming in the quick game, No. That's what it turned into, and then you saw not good offensive efficiency from the Eagles. Yes, and and you know the year they were really good. Him and even though AJ Brown had much more yards, I think they had like basically. I think they might have even finished with the exact same amount of catches they did. that year. Yes. Um. Right, and you know Devontae Smith has been really produ- you know ninety five catches and then eighty one last year. Um. You know for twenty two hundred yards and fourteen touchdowns. So you know Devontae Smith has been really successful in all of all of this too. Smith is, and they and they added Jahan Dotson too. So it's Which I love man. It's it's going to be interesting how they mix all this together because I I'm a believer that Dotson belongs in the slot. Me too, right? But I did see an interesting stat that Devontae Smith is like significantly better in yards per route run in the slot. Now that's twenty percent of the snaps compared to um eighty percent outside that he got. But I, I do think we'll see. I do think. Dotson should be in the slot for them and gives them a slot option because they just have not had that in a long time. You know, they brought nope. in Paris Campbell and then cut him, uh, and it clearly wasn't the answer for them. They just, that's the one thing, even when they were good, you know, they didn't have that option in the slot. So I, I think Dotson belongs in the slot. I, with AJ Brown, I don't, maybe they try and use Smith on some of the bigger plays because one, Smith makes his own big plays too. But, you know, he's got that speed. He separates down the field. And you get some attention on you, – you start getting attention on A.J. Brown and like, hey, we got to we gotta cover inside leverage here, right? It just allows for more stuff. So I, I think offensively it's going to work. The, the question will be how does it go at the playoff level? And how are you excited for this run game? Because I kind of am. You know, they were number five and number eight rush team with Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift. And honestly – even though I don't think it's the best use of resources, because again, like look how good their run games have been with Miles Sanders, who's been awful in Carolina. DeAndre Swift, who I, I can't believe Chicago paid him, right? If there was one team that I thought should spend the extra money to pay Saquon, it was it was the Chicago Bears over DeAndre Swift. I don't like DeAndre Swift, but they made him look really good and got him paid. But Saquon Barkley being there, I do think we can see this run game at a at a different level. I still do want to talk about Jalen Hurts and the Blitz, but yes, but let's talk about the run game. I think Saquon Barkley is going from one of the worst offensive lines in football since he was drafted to easily the best, maybe the second best from the Detroit Lions over the last couple of years, right? The Ravens lost key pieces, so I, I, I don't think you could say them, but I think it's the Lions and the Eagles that have two of the best offensive line rushing situations. Now here's the now here's the main difference, Bobby. I thought Shane Steichen br- brings does and brings a very unique asset and and scheme from a running standpoint. And I think that's what you saw in 2022 and you even saw it with the Colts and what what they were able to do last year too with the solid offensive line. So while this offensive line does have talent and while I think, you know, Kellen Moore is going to do a fine job I don't know if it's going to be the same Shane Steichen level of stuff, but this is also where Nick Sirianni comes in because, hello, you're an offensive coach, bud. This is what you're supposed to do. This is where you're supposed to help out, right? Yeah, 
and I, again, I, I don't think Kellen Moore brings a this great dynamic to the run game, right? I, you know, with Garrett and McCarthy, they they weren't very detailed run games. Now no, they, they work really well because they had the talent. And then last year was bad, and and with the Chargers, which I don't blame that, even though the Chargers will have a top five run game this year. Um, <laughs> that's a guarantee. Um, but the talent of the offensive line is is I mean, Landon Dickerson's one is one of the best guards. You in the have game. three like Pro Bowl All Pro players, and and Lane Lane Johnson's probably the best right tackle. Actually, yeah, yeah. no, yeah, yeah, because Tristan works the left tackle now. Lane Johnson's the best right tackle in football. Oh, maybe Penne, maybe Penne. Maybe we'll Penne. say well, he's been one of the best right tackles in football. Landon Dickerson's an All Pro, and then you have Jordan Mailata. But that I mean, that is the big question with this team, though. Is you're moving Cam Jurgens in the center. Mm-hmm. It was already new to offensive line in general, you know, coming out of Nebraska. And I want to believe in it, but I think Mikai Becton's going to suck. I don't think he. I don't think he fits well at guard. He's starting right now. Yeah, he's their starting. He's their starting right guard. No, Tyler Steen. He is Mikai Becton is their starting right. Unless that changed in the last week. But you know, when we well, were that's... at Patriots Eagles camp. You know, that's fascinating. That was, that's their starter, Mackay Becton at guard. I don't know. Which about I love Mackay Becton's talent. I loved his rookie year, and then it just fell apart for him with his health when his play wasn't uh, up to par. That's the worry. Is like, okay, maybe I'm not. I'm not convinced Cam Jurgens is just going to be sick at center, and you may have like a, a two weak points, which again is much better than most offensive lines in the NFL. But it does decrease the advantage you had when you had Jason Kelsey. Uh, there and Isaac Samulo to go with those guys. Yeah, that that's the first big ew, I don't know, question about the Eagles offensive line that they've had in a long time. And that's a big one. Yeah, and you also don't have like Jason Kelsey who's kind of like the calm, you know, the guy that's, you know, sit, make calm the storm for them either. Which that's um, where, I mean, of course there's a there's the tush push thing, right? Which I honestly don't feel like asking you the question of do you think the Eagles tush push will be as Will be as a weapon as it was in previous years. I, I don't. I don't know the question of that. We're gonna find out early in the year. Um, but where I do think they will lose Kelsey the most, if you're, if you're ready to, I kind of want to talk about Barkley more as a player. We could talk about maybe him in in the additions when we get to additions and losses. But where I think they'll miss Kelsey the most is calling out protections up front. And getting the offensive line set, getting the offensive line in the right spots, making sure that everybody's good. You know, we've talked to Nate Tice before, and I think you've even had the critique of Jalen Hurts of being like, you need to take more control and command at the line of scrimmage. And now that Kelsey's gone, Jurgens is in, we're playing back at center. We haven't done that since Nebraska, haven't done that at the NFL level yet. Plus, this is a new offense. Plus, there's questions on if Jalen Hurts has that command anyway. Like, who's doing it? Who's the one that's going to be making those calls? And this is a team that will inevitably have trouble picking up the blitz again, I think, this year. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's the big worry for for the, you know, that's what we said. Like, my pessimism for the offense is, like, will they have answers for the blitz? And I I, I still do have words. I mean, we were at that practice, and it was a huge issue, right? Yeah. It wasn't guys just getting beat on the, like, no, it's just, like, guys were. Free rushers. Free. Now they were playing against the Patriots, you know, you know, you're not game planning or anything for those, but like that was happening a lot. There were safeties running free into the backfield. Um, and I do I do worry about that. I think that is the I mean, it's something we should find out fairly early in the season. Yeah. Why right? why do you think I mean you're 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 a film guy and I and I think, you know, you we watched you watch the Eagles enough to I think have an answer on this. At least going off of last year, why were they so bad at picking up blitzes? I don't know. Like it, that's, it's it's mind numbing, right? Like from well, I'll talk from the coaching standpoint, like why Brian Johnson, let, let alone picking up the blitzes, and not having outlets, right? When you're when you're clearly facing a blitz, and Jalen Hurts is forced to play hero ball because there's no outlet. Why is there no outlets, right? Is it simply just because you don't have a slot presence? Is that it? You know, is it because you don't trust DeAndre Swift to get into the right spots? You know, is, is that it? There was there was no excuse for the coaching side from that. From Hurts' side, I just don't think he really sees it all that well pre-snap. Okay. He he has a hard time, you know, figuring out where where the disguising stuff, where things are coming from, and I just think he has a hard time with that. Now he has the talent to play hero ball above and beyond that, right? Like a lot of their offensive success towards the end of the year 
was because Jalen Hurts was going above uh, above and beyond what the coaches were giving him. Um, but they all, you know, so it'll be interesting to see Kellen Moore, who does give the quarterback some freedom at the line of scrimmage, how this marriage is going to work. Right. Because right, if you- they brought back some weather offensive coordinator who's like, like not you're not saying the protection, set it and forget it type thing, then I, I actually th- I'd feel better. But that's not Kellen Moore. Right. All right, where do you want to move to next? You want to move to the defense? Yeah, so defense, I mean, so many things fell apart last year, but the defense was the main issue by by a mile to me. Um, you know, you took bad and Sean Desai as their defensive coordinator and made it worse with Matt Patricia. I mean, it, it, they were blitzing and playing man when their personnel was not made for that at all. I mean, none of their corners, even in their be- even in their best years, like James Bradbury and Slayer, just not man cover corners. Um you know, you didn't have the safeties or linebackers to go. It was just ugly, right? Like, you know, it's third and short, and you're playing like a 51 front with Nolan Smith at linebacker. Like, just stupid. One of the, like, again, like awful coaching. I'm not talking about just like, ah, oh, this isn't very good coaching. Just like, this is, this, you are actively hurting this team coaching from Matt Patricia. And they go to Vat, uh, Vic, Vic Fangio, the takeover, right? People think of Vic Fangio, and they think of like the clones of Vic Fangio. Like, oh. We're going to sit back and play soft, bend, don't break. We're going to put four deep nonstop. And there's going to be part of that. But the difference between Vic Fangio and all the failures like Sean Desai, who have been underneath him, is that he's not just sit back and watch, right? He's not Ed Donatel or Joe or, or Joe Barry. He they are aggressive, right? They blitz, they run simulated, they, you know, they run, you know, these simulated pressures to get guys as free rushers. They disguise their coverages really well. And I, I think he's going to have this defense ready, right? You've got a front that is not what it was once, but it has a lot of potential. Um, and, I, and I like some of the young guys that they brought in on the back end, right? You know, talking about their first two draft picks, bringing back Chauncey Gardner. Um, still a huge linebacker question. Yeah. But I think this team has enough talent to give Vic Fangio a top 10 defense. Yeah, I mean, the, the front has to be better. Um, you know, 2022 after... You know, did they break the record in sacks in 2022? And then 2023, they very much did not uh, break the record in sacks. So you, know, you bring in Bryce Huff, um, who I think has you know had better advanced numbers than Hassan Reddick. But now that Bryce Huff is is launched into that full time role, and you know teams are going to be pre- be preparing for you different. They're going to know your film. They're going to know how you work. How are you going to be able to do? I don't want to anoint uh, Bryce Huff as this. Uh, as this darling as a pass rusher until we see him start on a full-time basis because he only played like half the snaps for the Jets versus Hassan Reddick is, is, a, is a proven pro. Um, you know, Nolan Smith under a 10% uh, pressure rate last year for a rookie year, so that wasn't very good. Um, ba- basically, can I get to my X factor? Because where yeah. I think the, this Eagles defense is going to you know live and die by. Jalen Carter showed superstar stuff at certain points last year. It was inconsistent. Um, was there was there an injury in there? I, I I don't know. Part of my conspiracy theory brain wants to maybe think so. Jalen Carter. I mean, he my did ex- show a not being in shape throughout all the draft process, and then yeah, sputtered out as the season went along. Jalen Carter's my X factor. Where I think he he already is, in my opinion, a top five pass rushing interior defensive lineman. If you look at his win rate, um, you know. Jalen Carter is already, a t- I think his win rate in true pass sets was was in the top five. I think his win rate um, overall yeah, among. Yeah, his fifth in overall win rate. Yeah, and I think he was third among in interior defense alignment in true pass sets. So if Jalen Carter is a superstar, like I think he can be, if he's consistent, if he's in shape, if he has his head on right, then I think he can help carry this Eagles pass rush to being a, an above average unit again. But if Jalen Carter's not that superstar, if he's inconsistent, if he's there some weeks, and he's there, and he's not there other weeks. Then this defensive unit is a very different defensive unit. And he is a head case, but head cases can be great footballs every great football players every single week. Like you mentioned, fifteenth in win rate, fourteenth in total sacks and pressures yeah. for defensive tackles. But twenty-seven of his total sacks and pressures came in the first six games. He had twenty-two in the final ten games. Oh boy, that's half for the people at home. Um, like he's he 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 has. He he should be a dominant fo- like he should be talking. We should be talking a about star. a top five. Def- yeah, a star defensive tackle. We should be talking about the motor of the Philadelphia Eagles defense for the next ten years. Should be Jalen Carter, but 
You need to be in shape. You need to have, you know, you need not to hurt yourself with other activities um, and making yourself look like a fool, uh, you know, on and off the field. Right. So like he, he is, he is the cog. He should be, he should be he sh- this year. Right. I'm not talking about next year. Like, like no, you it's, said, it's right now. He should be the best player on this defense. Yes. Like name me the player who should be better than him on this defense or more important. It should, it should it shouldn't be there. I mean, right? he, he's, he's the player that's already shown the, the, the biggest flashes out of anybody on this defense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've, you've had to replace Hassan Reddick now, Jonathan Hargrave, Fletcher Cox. Right, so now you have you know Nolan Smith. I'm not make, I'm not expecting Nolan Smith to make this big jump up, but he can make a jump. He's got it for um, a first round pick, you know. Yeah, you know, late first round pick. Yeah, I, I don't have the biggest expectations in the world for him. But Bryce Huff is also like a key, like you said, right? Third in win rate after Parsons and Garen, second in pressure rate after Parsons, but 56 in pass rush snaps. Right, so he didn't get a lot of opportunities. He's a net negative in the run game. He's bad in the run game. They need him to be a more complete player because they're going to ask him to do that. You know, you have Josh Sweat there. Um, you know, uh, so in Brandon Graham, I don't know how much you know run he's going to get for them. So they'll still be able to rotate a little bit. But I mean, in reality, Bryce Huff should be their best player, and you want your best. He should be get so he should be getting the majority of the snaps, right? Yeah, should I be agree. getting a seventy to eighty percent snap share if he's going to be your best player out on the edges. Yeah. And the last guy that we really haven't talked about on that front. And this is mainly a guy that you're going to have in there to stop the run. Jordan Davis, there is no excuse for him to be 55th in run stop rate among interior defense alignment. Like, come on, bro. Like, for former first round pick, and that was supposed to be. Because he does nothing as a pass rusher. That was supposed to be his thing. Like, he was drafted in the first round. Like, this dude is just going to be the most dominant run defender that you're going to see because he's so big, he's so large. He showed it at Georgia. The Eagles are going to draft him, and it's not fair that this guy fell to him and the, and, the, and they drafted him. Right? That was supposed to be a you know a, a Howie a Howie masterclass, and he just has not shown it yet, man. That's another guy in year three that needs to step up, big time. These you know the drafting Georgia players needs to not become a meme and become good players for them. Right. Linebacker, what the hell are they going to do here? <laughs> Like is is it gonna be Devin White and Zach Bond or Devin White and Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Like week eighteen, Justin, who's who? Who are we saying is the best linebacker on the Eagles? Um, I I think they're gonna, Devin White's a pro. He's he's been there. He's done that. He's also Nicole, been really bad the last few years. Nicole Dean's been hurt, but he's there. I, I I think Jeremiah Trotter is gonna is gonna wind up stepping up to the plate, and I and I know you want to talk about him a little bit. Yeah, I really like Trotter Jr. You know, I, he gets hated on because he doesn't reach like all the athletic thresholds you want. But you know, you know, you talk about a guy like Devin White who does reach all those athletic thresholds, and get, like linebacker is a mental position, man. And I and Tr- Trotter Jr. knows how to play the linebacker spot. You know, I know, I know people like to shit on him, like, oh, he's only there for his name and stuff. And I actually think he can play some ball, right? And I, I'm interested to see because I, I, I like Trotter Jr. And I, I think, like I said, I think there's a good chance he is their best linebacker, um, by 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 year's end. I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. So who who are the starters gonna be for them? Um. I mean, I think they'll uh, they'll probably go with De- Devin, Devin White. They gave Devin White some good money too. Devin White and I haven't. I mean, I I, would, I think I would go with Jeremiah Trotter. Their official depth chart says um Zach Bond. They have well. They also they don't have a first and second team. They have first team. They have all four guys in the first and second team. Oh sure. Which uh. In fact, I'm going to try and look it up right now to get a firm answer on that. Look Think, it up. Things, things, things I would have looked up before if I wasn't overworked. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. How about that? We'll see Friday, Friday in Brazil. We will. Um, coverage wise, they have the chance to be a lot better, but it's also unproven, right? Kenyon Mitchell, me and you love him, right? He was. Thought he was the best um, defensive player in the draft this year, and the Eagles got him. Of course, yeah. Like he, I love Kenyon Mitchell. 
Um, you bring Chauncey Gardner back, that's big. You know, they kept James Bradbury, even though he's probably not going to play. They moved him to safety. You have Darius. Do you have anything left of Darius Slay? And it, it looks like Cooper DeGene is going to be their nickel, which could really work in a Vic Fangio defense. Yeah. Um, young guys, I think they're going to bank on these young guys. Quinion Mitchell, could he be in the nickel too? I would put I would, him on the outside. Yeah, he needs to be on. I mean, who else are they going to put on the outside if if not if not Mitchell? Yeah, they have Isaiah Rogers. Yeah, he's an he uh, he's a nickel to me. Yeah, you know, Keely Ringo's not a, a option out there. Yeah, kind of surprised they didn't move Cooper DeGene to to safety, but um, this is the secondary is going to be better than than what they were last year. It's just a matter of, of how much, and I I. I I think Darius Slay still has stuff left in the tank. Uh, I I would not put him in the same breath as James Bradbury, whereas James Bradbury, I think, kind of needs to move to safety, and I'm surprised that he kind of surprised that he kind of made the team, and they're kind of keeping him around. But good for James Bradbury. But I think Slay and Quinion Mitchell, fine fine duo this year. But you are bent. You're there may be some struggles for Quinion Mitchell because that's just what happens with these rookie corners, and then even Cooper DeGene, who coming off injury, playing nickel corner. How is that going to look? Yeah, absolutely. All right, new additions. Kenny Pickett, Saquon Barkley, Jahan Dotson, Eck Pear Can was cut. Mikai Becton, Bryce Huff, Devin White, Zach Bond, Chauncey Gardner. They lost. Marcus Mariota, to DeAndre Swift, Jason Kelsey, Hassan Reddick, Fletcher Cox, Nicholas Merle, Zach Cunningham, and Kevin Byard. I mean, these additions are better than the losses, even though. Eh, it's debatable. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say no. It's you lose Jason Kelsey. Hassan Reddick and Fletcher Cox. You know, Kevin yeah, Byard, I'm go- Kevin I'm Byard they... is good too. Yeah, he didn't play so well for them. But I, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to... I disagree. Nobody, They're, the losses are bigger than the additions. Yeah. But still, I mean... Especially I when mean, you think of DeAndre Swift, the production he gave them, despite not liking DeAndre Swift that much. Right, but, but Saquon Barkley headlines us, and without getting too numbers heavy and everything like that. I mean, we've we've watched Saquon Barkley every single carry that he's taken with the New York Football Giants, him and I, uh, Bobby and I. And I think Barkley, maybe some Eagles fans will be surprised to see when he hits the open field that, man, maybe this guy isn't as fast as, as we thought. But you want to know what Saquon Barkley is much better than what he was in 2018, 2019? I think he's a much better running back. I think he's a much better runner of the football where even if he's not going to, you know, hey, uh, a 50 to 60 yard Saquon Barkley uh, touchdown run, what would have been in 2018 and 2019 is maybe a 20, 30 yard run or a 40 yard run now, even though I know the next gen stats, he can still reach the same speed. He is not as explosive as he once was, but who knows? I think the the explosive run rate could go very much up under this Eagles offense. Having the threat of Jalen Hurts' legs, especially even in the in the design run game, it's going to help him. Having this Eagles offensive line is going to help Saquon Barkley. So uh, even the uh, the runs of 10-plus yards are going to go up, I think, exponentially for Saquon Barkley oh, than, what, there. than what we've seen with the Giants, out, maybe outside of 2022. Absolutely. Draft class, Kenyon Mitchell in the first round, Cooper Jazin in the second round, Jalex Hunt in the third round, Will Shipley in the fourth round, Anaya Smith in the fifth, Jeremiah Charter in the frith. The frith. The first, uh, the Trevor first. Keegan in the fifth, Johnny Wilson in the sixth, and then Dylan McMahon. Um, what do you think of the whole, uh, you know, Howie Roseman just drafts names we know uh, joke? If they're good players, which I, I like, I like this draft. I, I, yeah, do I like this draft? Well, here's guys? where here's where the joke comes. Like Johnny Wilson, like oh, John, it's like Johnny Wilson sucks. Johnny Wilson's never going to be good in the NFL, and Keely, like Keely Ringo. Like, oh, another Georgia player. It's like, yeah, but Keely Ringo's not good. So, like, that's sick that he played on that Georgia team. Not not going to be good in the NFL. Uh, but it is funny. But, like, but like Will Sh- Will Shipley, they actually have a role for. Like, he actually has gotten some first-team reps in camp. They're going to use him as a receiver, which is kind of his only role in the NFL anyways. Um, Anaya Smith isn't going to play this year. But Trotter Jr., again, a name we know, but I really like Trotter Jr., so it fits my agenda. Uh, who's your X factor for this team? Jalen Carter. Mine's uh, Cam Jurgens. Fair, awesome, good. Like, it's a big swing on the potential of this offensive line. It could be just like, oh my gosh, the Eagles did it again, or it could be like, yeah, you guys really miss Jason Kelsey, huh? You guys are tweeting at him every single week to get come out of retirement, aren't you, Eagles fans? Uh, over under ten and a half wins. 
dude, I, I, I'm going to stay stubborn and say the, the talent is too big to fail. I'm going over. I think they're going to win the East. The talent isn't too big to fail, but the talent is too big to let them be like a, a 500 team. So I, I, I do think they're winning the East, and I think this, the Cowboys, there's some issues going there. We talked about on the TPP, over 10 and a half wins. I'm, I'm going to believe in this Eagles team until they force me to not for a set, you know. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Because there's, there's two talented. There's good coaching on the defensive side. We'll see what, how the offensive side coaching plays out. But they're just too talented. Even even if they're badly coached on offense, they're gonna be able they're, they're gonna be a top ten scoring offense in the NFL. They were people, last year. People acted like they were the worst eleven win team of all time last year. And maybe they were, but they won eleven games. Right. Which is crazy. All right. all right. That is the Philadelphia Eagles, and this is football today.